Hi, I'm Dustin from Canomax USA, and today I'll be giving an overview of how to get started with your Canomax 6162 series high temperature anemometer. Canomax's high temperature anemometer is equipped to tackle high temperature testing in a variety of different applications, like drying process control, forming process control, exhaust air measurement, and device performance testing. Every package comes with a shoulder strap, AC adapter, two analog output cables, and six C batteries. When ordering your high temperature anemometer, you'll need to decide which of the three probes you'd like to include in your package. Probe model 0203 is our mid-temperature probe rated for temperatures between 32 and 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Probe model 0204 and 0205 are high temperature probes that measure airflow between 32 and 752 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the 0204 probe is 1,000 millimeters long compared to the 0205 probe, which is 500 millimeters long. All probes come with a sharp looking carrying case, a cable to connect with the 6162 anemometer, and an NIST traceable calibration certificate. And if you're looking to attach these probes directly to a high temperature test environment, you'll need a compression fitting for your specific probe. Each of these accessories and more can be found under the Accessories tab on the 6162 Series High Temperature Anemometer product page at canomax-usa.com. Now we're going to learn how to get started with this instrument. Say you're performance testing a device, like an industrial drying oven. The manufacturer or lab using the device may want to monitor airflow during the process. But in addition to these applications, the device manufacturer may want to do benchmark testing for quality assurance purposes prior to selling the device. To do this, you'll need to consider things like how many points will you need to measure simultaneously, what is the temperature and velocity of the air you will be measuring, and whether or not you're going to attach the probe to the test environment. If you need to measure multiple points around the oven simultaneously, you'll need multiple units. But thankfully, you won't have to worry about compiling data from each device yourself. Analog output is available for connecting to a data logger or process control device for automation purposes. If the device you're testing operates at temperatures ranging from 32 to 392 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll want to use probe model 0203. It can measure air velocity ranges from 40 to 9,840 feet per minute at 32 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 to 9,840 feet per minute at 212 to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're testing an environment that ranges 212 to 752 degrees Fahrenheit, use Pro Model 0204 or 0205. They can measure air velocity ranges from 138 to 9,840 feet per minute at 392 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit, and 197 to 9,840 feet per minute at 572 to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. Something to note is that temperature can be measured up to 932 degrees Fahrenheit with the 0204 and 0205, but air velocity can only be measured at temperatures up to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. When you want to directly attach your probe to the test environment, you'll need a compression fitting. Probe model 0203 uses the 3 quarter inch model, 6162-07, and Pro Model 0204 and 0205 use the one inch model, 6162 06. The cabling for these probes have a max temperature tolerance of 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep that in mind before you think about exposing the cabling to the test environment. If you don't need to directly attach to the test environment, you can hold the probe at the measuring point from a safe distance using the extension rod designed for your Pro Model. On the front of the device, you'll find the LCD display and keypads. The left segment contains your scroll keys for navigating the device menus. Or, if you're at the monitor screen, pressing the down key will display the variation graph for air velocity. Pressing it again will switch the range for the graph, and pressing up will go back to the original screen. The set key executes your selected items, while the start stop key starts or stops a measurement, and the menu key pulls up the menu for assessing other device functions. The right segment has a fast slow key for cycling through different speeds the anemometer will update values at. Fast mode displays the instantaneous value every one second. Slow one mode displays moving average deviations for five seconds, and slow two mode displays moving average deviations for 10 seconds. The print key will print a hard copy of a held reading using a connected printer. To hold the screen of a reading, 
you'll press the hold key. The back key displays the current battery level and the power button turns the device on or off. On the right side of the anemometer is the probe connection port. On the back is the battery compartment. On the left side, you have a contrast knob for adjusting the clarity of your LCD screen, a backlight switch for turning the screen's backlight on or off, an RS-232C digital output terminal used for sending raw data or stored data to a computer or printer, a DC in port for connecting the anemometer's optional AC adapter, analog output terminals that output velocity and temperature simultaneously, and a remote terminal used for remote control function. When you first power on your device, you'll be met with one of two screens. The probe screen will pop up when a probe isn't connected to the anemometer, and the second screen is your typical monitor screen. In the top left of the screen, you have the current date. In the top right, your current device measuring speed, and below that, the current time. At the center of the screen, you have the current air velocity being read, and below that, the current air temperature. To make sure you're getting accurate readings from the start, Confirm that the number on the probe cable matches the one on the probe board found on the inner panel beneath the anemometer and the screen shown when you power on the anemometer without a probe connected. If you're using the analog terminals for your measurements, make sure you're getting the output ranges you want for air velocity and temperature by adjusting them in the analog output section of the menus. Once you've picked the range you want, you can press the menu key to return to the menu screen and press it again to return to the monitor screen. For digital output, you have the option to adjust the baud rate of the connection. After selecting the baud rate, you'll be returned to the menu screen to decide whether you want to transfer raw data via monitor or transfer stored data via data output. When transferring raw data to the Canomax data processing software, make sure to display the monitor screen on the anemometer. While transferring data, don't use other functions. There are three modes you can use to take measurements with your anemometer. Average mode averages all data from the duration of the measurement. Interval mode averages data within multiple intervals and then presents each interval's average at the end of the reading. Flow rate mode calculates air volume using average air velocity and the area of the duct you're measuring. Selecting average in the measurement menu will show you the options you have for configuring your reading. S time represents the sampling time in seconds. Data represents the number of times you want to sample. Memory is for selecting whether you want the data to be stored to the local storage on the anemometer. And print is for having the anemometer print out the calculation results via a connected printer. Selecting interval in the measurement menu shows you some similar options, but now you have INT, which represents how many minutes it takes for the next sample to be taken, and points designates how many sampling sequences occur. Flow rate mode adds on to the options found in interval mode by including area, which represents the cross-section area of the duct you're testing. And although points may seem to be the same as interval mode, it actually defines how many points within the duct's area are being measured to obtain the average air velocity. Selecting display in the data output menu will show previous measurements. At the center of the screen is the page number, and below that is the measurement mode used for that reading, an indicator of what factor or factors were measured, and below that is the date and time. To display the data for that reading, Press the set key, and the results will appear on the screen. If you want to print your results, instead of selecting display under the data output section, you would select printer. The following screen gives you the option to print a range of pages. Once you've selected the range of pages you want printed, you'll choose either result for printing the calculation results, data for printing only the measured data, or all for printing both. To delete data, navigate to the memory clear section. Here, you'll have the option to either fully wipe the stored data on the device using All Clear, or wipe a range of data pages using Clear. If you want to delete a single data page, just set the start and end pages to the same number. That about wraps things up. If you have any other questions about testing with the Canomax 6162 series high temperature anemometer, feel free to visit our website at canomax-usa.com, call toll free at 800 247-8887 or email us at sales at canomax-usa.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos on the ultimate measurements.